a welcome back at the Chaos West stage, where you can hold your talks. The next talk is held by Jardi about personal service. Thank you. Go ahead, Jardi. Well, um, let's start. Uh, my presentation, um, I'm going to try to, to show a possible alternative to solve the big problem that we have when we want to connect final users to the decentral, decentral world. As you know, uh, right now we, we have many centralized servers like DNS or the same web pages or the data centers and uh, big servers are very much centralized. And we, in the other side we have a very good um, decentralized tools like for example um, IPFS, uh, Ethereum, Namecoin, there are a lot of tools that are very good, they are decentralized servers, but uh, we have a problem when the final user wants to connect to these uh, decentralized uh, alternatives. So the proposal that I am making here is that uh, mainly is that everybody has a server. I know that this is very difficult. Uh, I'm not, I do not pretend that uh, everybody starts a server, but um, I, b I strongly believe that there is people that can create a server and share this server with uh, maybe his friends or the, his first circle of people. So the idea mainly is you can see this in this schema. So you have your personal server. To your personal server, you connect via VPN, the mobile, the tablet, the desktop. You can even have like two, three, four, five users, maybe your family, your you know your neighbors or your ever friends that connect to the server. And in the server, we in, in this server we install a set of uh, decentralized tools like um, I don't know, uh, for example, a DNS resolver or a, an, a blockchain or a, an IPFS node or whatever uh, decentralized tool that we want to install. So this is mainly the main the main architecture that we have uh, here. Okay. So what I'm going to explain from now on um, is uh, just explain how to do. For example, to, to visit a decentralized, a pure decentralized web page. In this case, I'm going to use uh, ENS um, uh, names, uh, name services in Ethereum name services in order to resolve a name and that connect that to the an IPFS in or, uh, to IPFS in order to get a simple static page. Okay, so the way to do that, first of all. Uh, we have the we have to connect we have to connect the client as you know the end client to the per, to the personal server. This step that could look very difficult, but at the end is not much more difficult than connecting to a Wi-Fi. That most of the users now how to do it. I know that's a difficult process, but it's a w only one setup process and it's not much more difficult than creating a Wi-Fi. You must think that most of the current, uh, most of the current um, 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 operating systems already have the, all the, you know, all the software, you already have the, in place where you can configure many different kinds of, I, uh, of, um, of a tunnel, of a VPN with a specific server. Um, so one, exa one possible solution could be to use L L2TP over P IPSec, but PPTP or any other IP. IP. In this case, I'm using a L L2TP, um, L2TP over IPSec. Once we have the, 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 the client connect, when we have the client connected, the setup that, uh, the way that we connect the VPN is a setup where we don't send all the traffic through the VPN as a normal VPN. What we do is, okay, we let all the traffic go the same way, but we push the DNS configuration to the client. This is a, a, a ver quite very much a standard option when you configure a VPN. Uh, a, a VPN connection. So what we do is we create in our personal server a bind or a, D or a, 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 a DNS resolver uh, software and uh, when the client connects to the VPN actually 
the client will use our DNS, will use our DNS uh, instead of using their, their standard DNS. In our DNS, our configuration, what we do is mainly we just forward the, the, the query to a regular DNS in general. But we catch if, for example, somebody asks for a decentralized domain, for example, a .f or a .bit, then we just, what we do is we just redirect that name to our server so that we can handle it, okay? This is how it would look more or less a DNS record. The, the most important line here is this one. We say that everything .f goes to this, uh, this private IP, which actually is the address of our server. Okay, and this is the configuration that we have in the DNS on our, on our, on our server. Okay, so, okay, when somebody asks, uh, I don't know, uh, bylina.f, it will solve, and it will ask to my server to serve the page to bylina.f. So then we just need a, a simple piece, it's a kind of forwarder that just takes this, uh, this, uh, this query, this uh, get, uh, HTTP get, okay? And it just, in, in, the in the case of ENS, just goes to the Ethereum, to the Ethereum in the same server we have an Ethereum node. So it goes to the Ethereum, it checks which is the actual, um, in this case, IPFS hash that we extract from the ENS Ethereum. And then we get this hash and go to IPFS and get this, this hash. And all that we go and that forward, we forward that to a, to a customer. This that looks very, very quite difficult. At the end is not more than 10 lines of code. I'm gonna show you the lines of code. I think it's interesting. The first we could just create a server. The first lines we configure, we, we, we just get the, we just ask the ENS to resolve to a to resolve to a hash. This is what's done here in this in this second in this second uh, uh, in this second part of code. And then we just forward that to a local host, which is nine one nine zero zero one. That's where where actually is running a gateway, a IPFS gateway. So we are, we are just doing getting the hash and transferring here. And to get the hash, well, this is a quite a standard code in order to just to resolve to resolve uh, to a hash. Probably the most interesting thing is this last, this, this last line that tries to emulate what would be a text in a normal DNS. Okay? Okay, at this point, well, I'm going to try to show you how it would work, mainly. What we would do, what a normal user would do, is, okay, it, we have here uh, internet. Okay. Here we connect to the, to the, to the VPN. Just is now connecting. Looks like it's connecting. Okay, looks like it's connected. And now, if I go here and just do going to HTTP, here the important part is that .f. Okay, this is not if you try to do that in a normal browser, this will not work. But now here it works. This is a page that I set up in uh, I set up in here. Okay, so and. Um, well, this is. I'm going to show also another page that uh, I think it's interesting to show. One, if you remember, one of the one just a couple of months ago in the in, in all the Catalan uh, story, there was a, a web page that was that was censored. So you can see, uh, for example, if you go to catalan.revolution.f, should go, and it will go directly to the page where it was censored because this is in the IPFS and this is very, imp it's almost impossible to get censored on that, on, 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 on that page. Okay, so mainly you see how we use the personal server just to connect to a decentralized, a pure decentralized web page in this case. But this configuration of a server 
this configuration of the of the this configuration of the server uh, does not only apply to the decentralized web. Any decentralized application could be running could run in this server, and it's very useful when you are creating DApps to have this server because a lot of times you need, for example, to have uh, a kind of cache uh, of the blockchain in the in the in some place where the user can access to this data quite fast. Uh, another problem, for example, uh, if you are trying to do a DApp, is that it takes a lot of time, for example, to synchronize uh, the chain when the user starts. So, in this case, you don't really need. In this case, you don't really need uh, um, to, to wait because the server already has synchronized the, the, the server. So you can go and access directly to your, to your server, which is a true server. Okay? And um, the idea of the project in here is just, uh, okay, we have like an operating system. We have some, of the, some, uh, some modules which would be quite a standard. And then we, we can, the user should be able to install different um, dApps or applications that are running in the server that can be, for example, in a repository, in a decentralized repository where the people can choose which applications uh, install in their server the same way that they choose which applications they have in their iPhone on the, or, in their, or in their laptop. They can also choose which applications they have in the server. In some, of the, some examples of these applications, for example, could be a decentralized search engine which uh, part of the server that's al always connecting and always searching the, 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 um, the, the net could be running here, for example. So here we have like a full place where can grow, a lot of applications can grow on this, uh, on this server. So, well, that's mainly my presentation on that. I hope uh, you, uh, you, you understand and you, you see the idea on that. Um, we are working hard on this to be, get, to be real. We are trying that these personal servers be something that to be very, very easy to install so that as many people as possible be able to install and maintain these uh, servers. And I hope that at some day uh, we just uh, don't have more data centers, more centralized data centers anymore, and we have a full data center which is a one server for each of the individuals in the in the globe. And here is my presentation. Thank you. I don't know if I'm running how I'm running off time, but if you if if, if one query a uh, qu uh, that for me it's fine. Yeah. Eins. Dankeschön, Team. Hi. Uh, my question would be, if I run this, uh, if everybody runs the personal server, does this also increase actually the security of Ethereum network? Well, uh, in, in this, if, uh, if in these uh, servers there is a node in there, so as many as much nodes are in the network, as much uh, as uh, much better and much difficult to tamper at least the relaying part. Other thing is the other thing is the miners. This is not thing to be a miner. You could install here a miner if you want, but that's not the idea of this server. This server is more a connectivity a connectivity server. Um, hello, thank you for the talk. Um, how? Yeah. Okay. Um, if multiple people run this kind of this decentralized data center, how would all the servers connect to each other? Because in the schema it was shown as peer-to-peer, -peer, but you haven't said how the servers would connect to each other. No, the, uh, it's this server. It's ser uh, so the server has um, a set of tools like I don't know a Bitcoin, uh, a Bitcoin uh, chain, an Ethereum chain, an IPFS chain, which are which is just a piece of code that's a decentralized uh, decentralized code. This connects with the rest of the nodes via peer to peer. Peer to peer means that there is no central part where you connect, uh, where where you have to connect to. They just discover which servers are around and they get, create a mesh network, a peer to peer, an overlay network, a peer to peer network, and there is a protocol in order to synchronize and uh, all these all these servers. But it's uh, it's a, the idea is to 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 here to install. 
peer-to-peer -peer applications or decentralized applications, not a single, not a central application. Okay, so every application is responsible for itself to find the other peers, and it's not there is like a mesh or I know a cloud and air quotes created between all the participants. Yeah, yeah. Here is just a regular, a regular application. This, this peer-to-peer -peer application, they have a small trick: is the bootstrap. Uh, you know, the beginning when there is nothing, you need to you need to say by hand which are the initial servers. But once the network is set up, then you just can connect everywhere, and the the the, 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 the people is discovered. It's just for uh, the bootstrap uh, this part. It's a kind of centralized, but but for bootstrap. For the rest, you are once you are connected, then uh, the ne the network goes along. Um, if I want to run a personal server, is there a place where I find some resources like a configuration here? Okay. <laughs> At GitHub or maybe, is there something up to now, some resources to set up a personal server? Well, the idea is, um, right now, uh, we, I have set up this server a little bit by hand, so just um, getting the different pieces and putting it together. But the idea of this project is that you install that the same way that you install a, an operating system. You, know, you install an Ubuntu or that you install, uh, I don't know, a Debian or any other distribution that you just uh, set up. And it should be as, mo as much simple for the user as possible. Because the idea is this to go mainstream and to and as many people as possible to create their own server and manage their own server. So it should be very, very, very simple. And I'm sure you should be able to run one of those. <laughs> and your mother respects you too. Question? Not really a subject matter question, but since we have so much time left, can we look at your code slide again? Oh, sure. <laughs> this is, do you, want, do you have any doubt on that? Here I'm relaying in the HTTP proxy. Okay, H okay. Oh, HTTP proxy, uh, that mainly what it does, it just uh, forwards uh, an HTTP connection. You just say, here in the target, I target the URL, and then I con just uh, construct the URL with localhost 9001, which is, this is IPFS. I didn't do nothing here. The, the IPFS already have a gateway that's uh, published on port 9001. So I just put the content, uh, that I extracted from the blockchain uh, in the you know in the URL and forward. That's just um, a glue. It's, this is very much a glue uh, a glue code. And this is more Ethereum related, but well, at the end, um, this is very much how uh, ENS works. But mainly, what uh, what does here is just uh, find the resolver. Uh, for the node, the node is the name hash of a name. The main is a hash of the name that's trying to solve. And uh, once we have the resolve, we just get, we just ask the text method uh, to extract the DNS link key, and this will return the the, the content. And this is the content that I uh, ca uh, catenate to the URL in the other side. But that's a very, very, you know, it's a very simple code. It's just a glue code. That's done. more questions. No questions. Okay. Then my last questions. Where can we find you here in the Congress? Do you have well, I'm here? I'm just hanging around generally in one of the back 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 tables. Uh, but I'm Jordi. You can also come. You can find me also in Giveth in Giveth Slack. Giveth Slack dot Giveth dot io dot io, or uh, in Jbylina in GitHub or Twitter. LinkedIn, whatever. I'm a public person, so you, you can find me easily. Thank you again for your amazing talk. Thank you, Jordi. Thank you very much. <laughs>